Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Aziza, Menteri, Atroel, Kesehatan itu sudah atas pengikas guru saya, Raman Asya, hanya untuk utama, berutama, agar-agar yang saya berikan. Bukur Alhamdulillah, saya dapat menurut kami di sini. Saya bukan penyerangnya, penyerangnya Mak Atroel. Dan saya hanya hadir untuk memberikan satu penyataan penghargaan atau usaha persatuan dan ide dan tentunya penerbit masyarakat Cavendish, penggara dan sahabat nama saya BBDO yang begitu komited puluhan tahun memberikan sumbangan dan dukungan Excellency ladies and gentlemen this is a remarkable occasion this evening to see so many old friends ambassadors, high commissioners ministers, MPs and it is quite a unique experience um, particularly from our span of uh, the past 20 years to observe that finally we are able to launch a book about judicial discretion, travesty of justice and attended by ambassadors, high commissioners, ministers, MPs in this great country of ours, Malaysia. <laughs> this augurs well for the future. I'm here just to thank all so many who have endured, sacrificed, had this sense of conviction, tenacity of purpose to stay on course, notwithstanding the pressures, but because of the sheer determination and passion, the struggle for truth and justice. I must thank, of course, Aziza, the children, the family, was with two who actually stood this and, and tolerated me all these years. Um, some of them said, Papa, I think uh, go slow enough. But uh, I said, I don't have a choice. And uh, the choice is to compromise with the devil. And that is not possible. I must also thank so many of our colleagues in the party, in the then Pakatan Rakyat and now Pakatan Harapan, friends, including those who are now active and eating, who had uh, the courage to remain committed and together had to endure the hardship. Simon was here to represent the team and panel of lawyers from the days of Raja Aziz, Christopher Fernando, to my great brother Karpa Singh, who worked indefatigably hard because he believed in the cause of freedom. Siba also here. Ram Karpa, so 
Surrender, Latifa, and many others. And um, they went. It was very difficult for them to come back and forth to prison, to then um, bear with me because they were the only friends available at that time. I was in solitary confinement, so every time Siva comes, he had to listen to my at least uh, 40 minutes of lecture. I had no opportunity to give any speech or speak to anyone. So <laughs> they were extremely accommodating. And uh, this one occasion I joked with Kappa, can you imagine for you to continue 20 minutes non-stop speaking to him without interruption? I could do that because I was in prison. Nobody else could do that. But they were great friends and brothers and sisters. And I, I remain indebted to them. Um, so many others. I mean, I. The various ambassadors here, the representatives of the US Embassy, yeah. Not all presidents are that supportive, but uh, I must say that various administrations from Clinton to Bush to Obama, without fail, it raised the unknown issue every time they had the opportunity to discuss with us. <laughs> Our neighboring country, Indonesia, for example, from Habibi to Kusutu to Megawati, those years without exception, raised. Of course, my great friend, Taib Erdogan, seems to be more controversial these days. When it comes to Abu Ibrahim, he was very committed and was blunt in all his exchanges with Prime Minister Najib at that time. That please release my brother <laughs> So Mark, I, my duty, my task is to thank you, more so to you. Um, I cannot be because dialogue is here and my friend the norm was the finance minister in those years was, would be the best occasion to try to introduce the book in Bangkok. <laughs> um, but uh, I must say in all frankness that I am fortunate. I mean you've heard all the issues of travesty of justice and um, Certainly, very articulately, articulately done by Tongi, but uh, compelling case, strong worded, well crafted remarks from the then Court of Appeal judge, Dr. Shangdin, who, by the way, in his own way, had to endure this difficulty. He came out with very strong judgment in one civil case on the book, 50 Dalian. And the judgment was so strong and compelling that the powers that be decided that was it, he was not to be promoted. And he remained until his retirement as a court of appeal judge. But, People like him, the lawyers, the friends, who believe in this cause, actually contributed indispensably to this great transformation that you saw in the last few months. The success in Malaysia though it surprised many when Anwar decides to work with Mahade. I continue to be haunted with these questions all over the world. I don't even 
me to say, Anwar, why did you do that? I said, because I believe in this country and we should be able to be, we have to have that compassion and being able to forgive for the right cause, the sole intention of saving Malaysia from apartheid. And um, this hope, therefore, Mark, thank you again, encapsulates that struggle. This is not just about unknown. It's about independent judiciary. It's about malicious prosecution. I joked with Mark when he told me about this book, The Prosecution of Anwar. Yes, it should be The Persecution. That's why it's good lawyers. They listened, nodded, they did work with the act on it. Um, it talks about uh, the travesty of justice. And um, Aziza made that remark when I was transferred from prison to the palace. And the king made this wonderful movie. And then Aziza was there, and he said precisely this that Anwar, I'm not giving you this. Or expanding this record or giving you the full freedom, erasing all um, conviction of the past because I have the authority and the power to do so. I do it because it is my duty to correct gross injustice that I have. And I said, Your Highness. This is a very serious statement, Your Highness, because we're talking about travesty of justice and the judges compromise their position and became complicit to the crimes. He said, please feel free to quote me in your media address tonight. He was referring to the Emcop Mall address that was supposed to be the first the uh, public speech I'm to, to be given and the king told me precisely please feel free to quote what I said and that is the fact that I'm giving this not because I have the to do so because, but because I've gone through the papers and I'm in this country could not afford any such injustices in the future. That again, Mark, that this book should be a lesson in history, in law, but more so what Dr. Shamudin remarked earlier that we should not allow ever, ever the courts authorities to abuse their position and continue in any manner of form oppression, selective prosecution and denial of basic rights to any man or woman in this country. That, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, is the essence of what I have to say, I have to conclude. That is that this episode is over, but the lesson must be learned. Present leaders and future leaders of this country must be reminded that the oath of office, the constitutional guarantees are meaningless without that conscious sense of conviction to affect change based 
on the true meaning and spirit of the Constitution. With your kind permission, I want to read a small story affecting my old colleagues, inmates in Sungaiwilu prison. In the last few days, I've embarked on this fast to protest the treatment of prisoners under this so-called terrorist, terrorism law, SOSMA. Let me emphasize in front of the Deputy Prime Minister <laughs> that I do not condone violence, terrorism, or compromise with any criminal act. We should be tough and firm. But we must respect due process. And from what I know, I observe, in Sudan, the new law, SOSMA, is far worse in terms of treating prisoners than the Internal Security Act. So please bear with me. Tough against terrorist acts. Yes. But we must immediately take remedial action. Those who are protesting those prisoners now in the SOSMO for protesting must be given adequate safeguards of their lives. Thank you to the legal team. Thank you to Mark. Because you're not just talking about Anwar. But what Anwar has done in these years of trials and tribulations and in and out of prison, almost 11 years I do that, is that I'm not ever going to compromise when it comes to the issue of freedom and justice. So please excuse me for being taking this small episode because I think this is the right location because what is selective prosecution, travesty of justice, if it is meant for one man? I said I was fortunate to get over the tragedy of the trials, but still he is fortunate. My black eye incident is known throughout the world, but there's so many others, hundreds, who have suffered and not known to anyone. But that's not justice, what justice is all about. <laughs> justice is to protect the right of every single person. I mentioned person because not only citizens. Citizens must be protected. But they're non-citizens and foreign workers who are, who are treated like semi-slaves. And this has to end at least in this. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again. You, uh, this is a remarkable evening. I mean, that was terrible. This is our look. Uh, can you imagine? Five months ago, six months last year, it is unthinkable, unimaginable that you can see this peaceful transition taking place in this country. A very unique experience. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank all Malaysians who had the courage to affect this change. Not many countries can register this change without one life lost. <laughs> and not many countries could see this change with the tenacity that could make a 
from so many. You have Malays, Muslims, you have Chinese, Buddhist, Christians, you have Indian, Hindus, you have the Dayas and the Kadazans and the Moros. All oh, surprising. All political analysts, all the experts from the CIA to the Sabaks or whatever, and suddenly see this phenomenal change that is somewhat unprecedented. We don't thank one person. We must give credit to Don Mahathir. At 92 then, worked again with that resolve to support this agenda. You know, the most remote constituency in Malaysia is called Punjab Borneo. Is Willie here? Stand up, please, here, please stand up. And this man, Member of Parliament from Kadilan, represents that constituency. And I tend to be honest enough. To admit to him, I said to him, many years ago in the last election, I said, You work hard, damn it, you must win. Although in my heart, I said, Well, difficult. <laughs> but when I was in prison, because I didn't have center, I said, Pucha Bonio, my friend, one, it is the most remote of the tribes, and they contributed immensely to this new Malaysian spirit. <laughs> so, let us have the humility to acknowledge that all of us, including the most remote, probably least educated in the modern sense, but they are not illiterate because they understand what's happening. They may not understand that the impeccable English of Mark Trower, where they understand what justice and freedom is all about. <laughs> and that gives me that sense of conviction and courage. They can, where did, does it come from? I mean, in a way, crazy. I, I've said this before that earlier on, uh, upon my release in 2004. I can say first with the second, there's so many releases. <laughs> I, Aziza, the children were invited by Mandela to, to see him uh, 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 as his guest, Johannesburg. And Mandela was a bit too sentimental. He was, he was a bit sad because he said he was president. He could not influence the leadership to secure release for me. He was a bit sad. I said, Maniba, relax. <laughs> Mine was like a short walk to freedom. It was six years. I didn't realize it would be 11. <laughs> but then he said, I oh, don't know. People like us must be. Because especially when he saw children, Noah and Hannah and the rest of them, and kids were there. And he was a bit, I could sense he was a bit disturbed. He said, I oh, know. We must be mad or crazy to do what we did. Because he was thinking that Aziza, the children suffer in the process. There's a problem with me, people are less empathetic with me than the deputy prime minister. Um, they didn't realize that whenever I come in, the arrival of the right honorable deputy prime minister, Van Aziza, is my help, accompanied by the spouse. <laughs> Aziza talked immediately. My dear, I had endured this for the last 20 years. <laughs> and why are you complaining? I said, I'm not complaining, I'm just stating a fact. <laughs> By the way, my response to Madiba was this. I said, Madiba, I am absolutely certain that we are not mad. But certainly, 
in many ways we are crazy. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a great